Welcome to multivariable calculus, practice with the gradient. This is a practice set that involves the gradient. As a little review, the del operator operates on a function at a point to give orthogonal rates of change at that point. So it can be two dimensional, it can be three dimensional. This is symbolized by the del operator, which is an upside down triangle operating on a function. So what's unique about the gradient, there are three operations uh, that we can operate with the del operator on something simple like a function or a vector. This is the one that operates on a function and its output is a vector. So the del operator of a, uh, operating on a function is the partial of that function with respect to x. The uh, Thompson unit vector in the x direction plus the partial uh, of that function with respect to y in the unit vector in the y direction or in bracket notation, it looks like uh, this. The two partials enclosed in the brackets. But three variables, which is more common. <laughs> and in fact, if you had only two, you could put the third one in as z equals zero. Uh, this is the partial of f with respect to x in the x direction, or the unit vector in the x direction. The partial respect to y in the y direction. The partial respect to z in the z direction or in bracket notations, we add the third uh, dimension. The way this will work is we'll have a problem and then will come the detailed solution. So this is your practice set. You get more of a practice set by trying to solve the problem before looking at the solution. So you may, when you see a problem, if you wish to pause and try the problem and then go on, uh, that's fine. And probably will give you more uh, benefit. However, if you just want to see 10 examples, you can just go through. So we're going to find the gradient of f of x, y equal 4x, y at Eight, three. The del operator operating on x, y gives us the partial respect to x is for y, partial respect to y is for x, so we get the vector for y for x. And we would plug our values in. The 8 going in for the x, which happens to be in the second coordinate. The, the y going in for, uh, uh, for the, the 4 going in for the y, which happens to go to the first coordinate. So our vector is 1632. Well, we'll move on to three uh, variables. Find the gradient of f of x, y, z equals x squared, y, z cubed at 2, 3, 4. Okay, the partial with respect to x of our function is going to be 2x, y, z cubed. The partial with respect to y, we we have a, a y to the first, so that just becomes one. Holding the other variables constant is x squared z cubed. And the partial respect to z, we get three z squared. So here's the three z squared. And these are held constant, x squared y. Uh, if you are not familiar with partials, uh, by the time you get here, you should have encountered them. 
we take the derivative with respect to a variable and treat the other variables as constants. Now, if we plug 2, 3, and 4 into these expressions, we get 768, 256, 576. Bond gradient of x, y, z equals e to the x, y, z power at 1, 2, 1. Well, the partial uh, 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 derivative with respect to x, we're going to take the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Uh, and so the derivative of e to the ax is uh, a e to the ax. Here the a would be yz. So we get yz, the constant coming down, e to the xyz. Here we're taking the derivative with respect to y. So we get xz e to the xyz. And here we have the xy coming down, e to the xyz. Uh, plugging in, uh, we get 2 times e squared, e squared, two times e squared. Bond gradient of f of x, y, z equals x, z, sine y at one, zero, one. Well, the derivative with respect to x is z uh, sine y. The derivative with respect to y is xz. And the derivative of sine y is cosine y. And the derivative uh, of xz sine y with respect to z is x sine y. Then we plug in uh, 1 for x zero for y and one for z and we end up with zero one zero so we have the uh okay next one Find the gradient of f of x, y, z equals 3xy over z squared. Uh, for this one, I like to think of the z squared as z to the minus second. That makes it uh, a little simpler. So with respect to x, we can get 3y over the z squared. With respect to y, we'll get 3x over z squared. With respect to z, we got three to the minus second. Uh, so that would be negative two times three is negative six, z to the negative third, x, y. And then we can simply plug our values in and we have nine, six, negative 36. Find the gradient of f of x, y, z equals sine x, plus cosine y plus sine z at pi over two, pi over four, two pi. Well, this one's a little different because instead of having product or, or a quotient, we have addition. And when we take the derivative of a, a constant, it is uh, zero. So first we take the derivative with respect to x of sine x and we get cosine x. The other two contribute nothing. Take the derivative with respect to y, we get negative sine y. And when we take the derivative with respect to z, we get cosine z. And when we plug the pi over two, pi over four, two pi in, uh, the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. The sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. 
Uh, we have the negative from here and the cosine of two pi is one. Well, in physics and engineering, often we have elongated uh, objects like wires that carry current or something along those lines. And we find that the symmetry uh, is cylindrical, and that makes things a lot easier to shift to the cylindrical coordinates. So we'll look at the axis along our cylinder lines as Z. Uh, rho is going to be the distance of, out from the, the, ax, uh, the, ax, the Z axis. And phi is going to be the angle uh, perpendicular to the Z axis in the plane. So, The gradient is not quite the same here. We would expect it to be three partials, but what we get is the partial with respect to rho, one over rho, the partial with respect to phi, and the partial with respect to z. So we have to be careful. We have this new thing, this one over rho. So we can't just generalize. What in bracket notation? So find the gradient of f of rho phi z equals rho square over eight sine phi times z at one pi over six two. Well, the partial with respect to rho is gonna be two rho sine phi z over eight. Well, the two over eight is four, so we got uh, Rho sine phi z over four. The partial with respect to phi, uh, this term is going to become uh, not, not, uh, rho square over eight cosine phi times z. And so we're going to end up with uh, rho cosine phi over z. And why why not rho square? Because of the one over rho. Well, the rho cancels that. And the partial respect to z is going to become again the rho square is fine here. Uh, the derivative of z is one, and so it's going to be rho square over eight sine phi. So I'm going to plug in one for rho and pi over six for uh, phi and two for z. So this is going to become one fourth uh, times one half. Uh, so that's uh, one fourth times one half times uh, z, and z is two. So that becomes uh, one over four times one over half times two or one fourth. This becomes one as an eight. The cosine of pi over six is the square root of three over two, and this is a uh, two. So here we're going to have one squared, here's an eight, and this is going to be uh, one half. Find the gradient of f of phi, uh, of rho phi z equals rho z sine phi at 202. 
Well, the partial with respect to rho is going to be z sine rho uh, 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 sine phi. And the partial uh, with respect to phi is going to be z uh, cosine phi. And uh, the rho will cancel. It, it will give us a rho, but there's one in the denominator, so that cancels. And the partial with respect to z, I'm going to get the rho uh, cosine. Uh, I'm sorry, sine uh, phi. And plugging in 2, 0, 2, uh, we got 2 for the z. The sine of 0, well, once we see that, it's 0. Uh, 2 for the z, cosine of 0 is 1. Uh, so that's 2 times 1. And here we got the sine of zero again, so that gives us the zero. The convention for or theta and phi are shown here. Well, as you can imagine, it's going to get a little more complicated. So here, we do have to worry about the two angles, phi uh, theta and phi. Uh, theta is the angle we make with the, the uh, oh, well, I can go back and we can look at that. I think I can go back. No, I can't. Okay, so anyhow, uh, theta is the angle around and phi is the angle with the z direction. So here we're going to look at uh, the partial of f of r theta phi dr, uh, 1 over r, the partial with respect to theta, and 1 over r sine theta, uh, the partial with respect to phi. Find the gradient of f of r theta phi equals r squared at 2 pi over 6 pi over 3. This is not uncommon. Uh, a lot of times the reason for going to the spherical uh, gradient is because things depend upon the radius and not much else, if anything else. So, you know, you have R squared. The partial with respect to R of R squared is 4R cubed. Here, there is no theta dependency, so that's zero. And here, there's no phi dependency, so that is also zero. So 4R cubed, R is 2. So 2 to the 4th is, so it's going to be, uh, I'm sorry, it's going to be 4 times uh, 2 to the 3rd, or uh, 4 times 8 is 32, 32, 0, 0. Find the gradient of f of theta uh, or theta phi or to the fourth sine theta at three pi over two pi over two. Okay, this time I put in a theta. Uh, in the physical world, that's less common, but we need to practice. So here, the taking uh, the, the partial respect to R is going to be 4R cubed sine theta. Uh, the partial with respect to theta is going to be 
R to the fourth divided by R or a cube cosine theta, and this is going to be zero. And then we would just go ahead and evaluate and get our answer. Well, thank you for watching, and I hope you uh, got something out of it. And if, if you uh, would like to keep up with the other videos that I have, uh, I have one on the, the theories of uh, the gradient. Uh, I would uh, ask that you subscribe uh, to the to the channel, and you'll be able to keep current as more will be released. And this, I hope, will help you. Thank you.